What is the difference between sensors like this? And this is the old fashioned Akara Zigbee motion sensor and sensor like this one here. That is the presence. These ones can detect motion and these ones can detect presence in a room. But there is also one additional difference between the classical motion sensor and the new presence sensors. Motion sensors are simple to work with. Or has something changed? We'll start in a couple of seconds. I'm a big fan of classical motion sensors and I have a couple of them. One of them is a wipe file, that one is from Shelly, Shelly Motion 2. But all the other sensors, motion sensors that I have are Akara ones and I really do like them. In my setup, I need simple motion sensors that allow me to configure some of the lights or vents inside the bathroom. But some time ago, the present sensors have started to emerge. The most famous sensor, of course, is Akara present sensor, since that was one of the first official of the shelf product that was available and also working on the Zigbee standard. After that came along a lot of other sensors. There are sensors that you can buy off the shelf. There are sensors that are made by the great community members, such as Louis and his EP1 and EP Lite. There are also companies that are selling a bunch of various sensors depending on the use scenarios, such as this one from Seed Studio and more. But today we will be looking at off the shelf product that is actually a presence sensor, but packed or should I better say lacking the features that a lot of presence sensors have. And that can actually be a good thing. If we look at present sensors, for example, this one here, which I will be doing a review very soon, we have a lot of functionality, a lot of options, a lot of things to play and tweak with. But bear in mind, not everybody needs complex things in Home Assistant. Actually, a lot of people posting on a community forum say that they think that Home Assistant is overwhelming with all the options and they just want something simple. So what if we could have a presence sensor packed with the functionality of presence sensor, but packed in such a way that we actually only have one feature and that feature is, is there a presence in the room or not? On 16th of November, Sonoff will be releasing this device here. I was able to play with it and I have been playing with it for the last week or so. This actually is very simple, but yet very powerful presence sensor. If you are looking for something that you can customize, tweak, create zones, etc., this product is not for you. But if you are actually looking for a device that you want to just plug, play and have it working inside Home Assistant, then this device may be the answer to your prayers. As the device hasn't been officially released yet, and I'm recording this video prior to the official release date, I'm not able to currently show you the web page for this device. But in preparation for the release, there have been some of the leaks. Few leaks have been tied in into the regulatory approvals, because devices that have wireless inside need to get some kind of approval. And that's why some of the data has been released. So what I can share with you actually at this time is just simple documentation for this device. And of course, we will later on be adding it to Home Assistant. This sensor has microwave radar present detection, light sensor and intelligent linkage. This of course is if you are using it with the EV Link app. But we will not be using it with EV Link, we will be using it with Home Assistant. And yes, no spoilers, it should work with both ZHA and Zigbee 2MQTT. It has a metallic base that you can either stick, screw or just use the magnet to attach to a metallic surface. And then you just attach via the magnets the sensor itself to the base plate. Yes, that's also one of the possible issues. That means that if you tug on the wire and it is permanently powered via the USB-C cable, you may pull the sensor out. The pairing process is very simple. There is one button on top, you press and hold that button for 10 seconds and the pairing process should start. And as I said, you can either use it with the EVLink app if you have Sonoff gateways and it should work with all the known Sonoff gateways. Also, it should work with Amazon smart speakers that have Zigbee technology. But as I said, I also checked it with Home Assistant and it should work with any Zigbee gateway that you have. 
MCU of the device according to documentation is EFR32. MG22. The device is powered by the 5 volts, it requires 1 amp, so you can hook it up to pretty much any old phone charger that you have. I already mentioned gateways, it should work with all the Zigbee bridges from Sonoff, Zigbee Bridge Normal, Zigbee Bridge Plus such as this one, NS Panel Pro and all the dongles, meaning the P and the E version. The installation can be done any way you want. It can be sitting on a desk and this is how I was partially testing it. It can be attached to a wall and that's also something that I was testing. I attached it to my metallic staircase. But you can also use the 3M adhesive tape that's on the back side or you can mount it or screw it to the wall. I did mention the range. The range is 4 meters and that means that it can see objects that are up to 4 meters in front of it but also 3 meters to the left or right. And due to how those microwave sensors work, if you have a fan, ceiling fan, it will probably trigger the sensor and also your pets can trigger the sensor. I've already talked about the pairing process, it says 5 seconds here, but since I count very fast, it's 10 seconds for me because I live in a time warp. Let's now add it to Home Assistant. As always, I will be adding it to both ZHA and Zigbee to MQTT. Let's start with the ZHA. Click on Add Device. Press and hold the button for 5 seconds or 10 if you count fast like me. And you should see it added to your home assistant. Select an area and that's it. If we go back and look at the specifics of the device, we can see that it has two sensors, motion and occupancy. Plus it has identify bind that you can press and nothing will happen. And we have two hidden entities, those are tied to the quality of network. If we add this to dashboard, and then we should have something like this. But for my testing, this motion part actually doesn't do anything. When the device is paired and it's working as a presence sensor or occupancy sensor, the motion part is always active. That means that you cannot rely or use the motion part for actually anything. I was really hoping that it would be both motion and occupancy sensor and that I would be able to distinguish between the motion and occupancy, but at least for now we will not be able to use that in the ZHA. As far as the occupancy sensor, that part works as it should, really nicely. Since we cannot change the configuration, you may be wondering what is the idle time. The idle time is 60 seconds. It means that after 60 seconds has passed and no presence can be detected in that period, the occupancy will go to away or clear. This is how it looks with ZHA, but what about Zigbee to MQTT? Press permit join to start the pairing process. Press and hold the button for 5 seconds. And we can see that SNZB-06P has been added to our Zigbee to MQTT. The device is recognized as a router, meaning that other devices can attach to it, because it is powered by the mains power or via the USB-C cable. If we look at exposes, hmm, we only have one sensor available and that is the occupancy sensor. To edit in Home Assistant, you need to go to MQTT integration, click on the device, we have motion sensor and then we'll edit it to our dashboard. Also, if you need, you can add last scene and link quality. If we compare this Sonoff SNZB06P sensor with the LimpTech one and both of them are at my table, well, you can see that this one is pretty simple. But the question is, do you really need for every room, for every circumstance, sensor like this? that has a bunch of functionality, bunch of settings, but can sometimes be overwhelming to tackle with. If you need a simple presence sensor that acts as a motion sensor, but also detecting when you're sitting down, then this one will be okay. When I was testing the sensitivity and the reaction time, both of those sensors were reacting as soon as they've seen me, which is an awesome thing. Should you buy this sensor? Actually, this all depends on what is the purpose, where you want to install and for what you want to use this sensor. If you want to cover the living room and have a separate space for watching TV, other space for reading the book and for multiple zones, 
you may be looking for something like this one here. This is the Everything Presence Sensor light version. But on the other hand, if you want to have a simple presence sensor, for example, in your study or where you work, then this sensor may be all you ever need. Just don't expect some fancy functionality, because you will not get that one. What about the price? I actually do not know what the price of this device will be. And this is something that can be either hit or miss. If the price is too high, then I don't see a reason to go for a device like this, I could actually go for something else. But if the price is just right and near the Akara's motion sensor price, then I would definitely go for something like that. But for me the biggest fail for all the present sensor is power. There is no way in my apartment that I would have any of those devices installed. And that feature of the powered via the USB cable is something that is not acceptable with me because my wife would kick me out together with all those wires. But I really would like to hear your opinion on this, so drop me a line down in the comment section below. Do you think that there is a market for a device like this, that looks like a simple motion sensor but actually is simple presence sensor? Or on the other hand, do you think that presence sensors should be able to detect various zones track objects moving away or from them and that you know that they are moving away or from the sensor to be able to play with sensitivity and much much more. What I think is that this device is great for people that are just starting with Home Assistant, that they want something simple yet efficient. The application for that device could be for example your toilet, bathroom, corridors or something simple to automate. For living room or bedrooms you may be looking for some more advanced sensors. But then again, I don't know what the price of this device will be, so I have to wait with my final decision. The link to this device will be added down in the video description below, together with the link to the documentation. And for the end of the video, I really would like to thank all those wonderful people that are supporting me and that have become YouTube channel members. Thank you all for all of your support. But let's not forget each and every one of you who has watched, liked or subscribed to my channel. If you too want to support the channel, you can do so by clicking the join button down below or going to my merchandise store and buying something there. I will be seeing you next time. Until then, bye bye and have fun.